in our previous lecture we have derived boundary conditions for current electricity or current problem or current density now in this lecture we will solve a numerical example which we will be dealing with lossy dielectric that is a dielectric which is going to have a finite conductivity so because of this we will expect a current flow flow through the dielectric whenever there is a potential difference across it so let us see what is the numerical example to keep the problem simple we are going to take our favorite parallel bit capacitor so let us say that this is the parallel bit capacitor with its top plate at potential v and the bottom plate grounded and let us assume that uh, between the plates of this capacitor there are two kinds of dielectric the first dielectric going to have property epsilon 1 sigma 1 and the second dielectric is having property sigma 2 and epsilon 2 let us say this width is d1 and this width is d2 and the area of the plate as well as the dielectric let us say is s now we need to find the current density between the plates it is an easy task then we need to find the electric field intensity e1 and e2 in both dielectric and then we need to find the surface charge density on the top plate the interface between these dielectrics and the bottom plate so these three questions we need to answer for the given problem now since this dielectric is low c means it is having a finite conductivity then we can imagine that there is going to be a current flow or current density will be there and according to the symmetry of the question since the voltage is applied uh, between the plates so we can ex expect that the current density will be having this direction now from the boundary conditions we know that j1n is equal to j2n that is the normal component of, of the current density is continuous now you know that according to the geometry of the problem this j1n or j2n are equal to the current density because current density is itself is in this direction or the normal direction so for the given problem we can write that this j1n is equal to j2n is equal to some j so the continuity of the normal component of the current density assures us that the current densities and therefore the currents in both the media that is dielectric 1 and dielectric 2 will be same and by Kirchhoff's voltage law we can easily write now that this total voltage applied voltage is equal to the total voltage drop and the voltage drop is R1 plus R2 into I where R1 and R2 are the resistance of dielectric 1 and dielectric 2. Now R1 is simply D1 over sigma 1 S and R2 is simply D2 sigma 2 S. So I can write V is equal to D1 over sigma 1 S plus D2 over sigma 2 S into I or V is equal to I by S, I have taken now S outside as common D1 over sigma 1 plus D2 over sigma 2. Now this I over S is simply the current density and that is what we need to find. So J is equal to V into on solving these two it is sigma 2 D1 plus sigma 1 d2 over sigma 1 sigma 2 so when it comes on the left hand side it will become sigma 1 sigma 2 over sigma 2 d1 plus sigma 1 d2 so in this way we have found the current density in both of the dielectric and the component normal component and since the current density is in the same direction so their continuity has assured that this is 
the value in both the dielectrics. Now in the next slide, we will try to find the electric field intensity in both the dielectrics. So let us again draw the figure. This is top plate and this is the bottom plate. It is at potential V and it is grounded. Now we expect that since this is, there is a potential difference between the plates, then we can expect that there will be a field in the dielectrics and the direction of field will be according to the geometry in this direction. So let us say this is E1 and this is E2. Similarly, D1 will be in this direction and D2 will also be in this direction. Now we need to find the value of E1 and E2. Now we know that uh, in terms of magnitude, this V is simply E into the total length L. So for our case, I can write it as E1 D1 plus E2 D2. Now further, since J1 is equal to J2 is equal to J is equal to sigma 1 E1 is equal to sigma 2 E2. So from this, I can find the value of E2 in terms of E1 and sigma 1 sigma 2. So it comes out to be sigma 1 over sigma 2 E1. So I will put value in this equation. So it will give me V is equal to D1 E1 plus D2 sigma 1 sigma 2 E1. So from this I can find that V is equal to D1 sigma 2 D2 sigma 1 over sigma 2 into E1 or it implies that E1 is simply sigma 2 V sigma 2 D1 plus sigma 1 D2. So in this way, I have found the value of electric field intensity in the first dielectric. Similarly, in the second dielectric from this equation, I can find E2 and it will be sigma 1 V sigma 2 D1 plus sigma 1 D2. So in this way, we have solved the second part of the question also. We have found E1 and E2. So from this D1 is simply epsilon 1 E1 and from this D2 is simply epsilon 2 E2. Now let us move on to the next part of the question where we need to find the surface charge density on the top plate, the interface as well as the bottom plate. So <clears throat> let us see how to solve it. Now I will again draw the picture. This is top plate. I will little bit magnify it so that we know about the interface we are talking about. So this is the interface between two dielectrics and this is the bottom plate. This is dielectric one, this is dielectric two. Now in our previous lectures, we have derived the boundary condition for uh, both uh, uh, the D as well as J. Now we know that A and 2 dot D1 minus D2 is equal to the surface charge density on the interface where this A and 2, if this these are two media, this is medium 1, this is medium 2, then A and 2 is from medium 2 to 1 and A and 1 is in this direction and D1 is displacement field in the medium 1 and D2 is the electric flux density in medium 2. So we will use uh, this boundary condition for solving uh, and finding the various surface charge densities. So let us take this interface, the interface between the top plate and the dielectric 1. So for this case, let us say this is 1 and this is 2. Let us forget about it for a minute about these 1 and 2 so that we do not get confused. So this will be A and 1 and this will be A and 2. Here will be D1 and here will be D2. Direction of D2 will be in this direction. Now let us solve this. So A and 2 dot D1 minus A and 2 dot D2 is equal to rho s. 
Now, since it is a metal, so D1 is equal to epsilon E1 is going to be zero for electrostatics. So this term is zero. Now, A N2 is in this direction and D2 is in this direction. So this dot product will be a negative well number. So this dot product and this minus sign, these two minus signs will get cancelled out and I will just get D2N is equal to rho S or it implies rho S is simply D2N is equal to, now D2N for our case is epsilon 1, this is media having epsilon 1 permittivity and E1 was the field which we found in previous slide. So it is epsilon 1, E1, N. So it can be now written as epsilon 1 into sigma 2 V, sigma 2 D1 plus sigma 1 D2. So in this way, we have found the surface charge density on this interface. So you see this is a positive value. So this interface is going to have a positive charge. Now let us try to find the surface charge density on the bottom plate. So again, let us say this is 1 and this is 2 and forget about these 1 and 2 so that we do not get confused now. So this will be A and 2 and this will be A and 1 and we know that uh, D2 will be in this direction and let us say D1 is this. Now this D1 is going to be 0 because it is in metal. So from the boundary condition A and 2 dot D1 minus A and 2 dot D2 is equal to rho S. So D1 is equal to 0. So this goes to 0. Now for our case D2 is in this direction and A and 2 is also in this direction. So for this case this dot product is positive. So this minus sign is not going to get cancelled here. So it implies that D2N is equal to minus of D2N is equal to rho S or it implies that the surface charge density is going to have a value minus. Now D2N is simply if this is the epsilon 2 permittivity and this was E2N. So it is simply epsilon 2 E2 and, and it was epsilon 2 sigma 1 V sigma 2 D1 plus sigma 1 D2. So this is the minus sign. You see that the surface charge density is negative now. So this bottom plate is going to have a negative charge on this interface, on this surface. So you see top plate is going to have a positive charge on the interface and the bottom plate is going to have a negative charge on the interface. But you see that these two charge densities are not equal in magnitude. In a normal scenario, we usually find that the top plate as well as the bottom plate have equal and opposite charge densities. But in this scenario, when the dielectric is low C, then these two are not matching or the magnitude are not equal. Of course, sign are opposite, which we expected, but magnitudes are still not equal. So where is the balance thing? So let us find the surface charge density on this interface. As you know that uh, epsilon 1, sigma 1 and epsilon 2, sigma 2 are not going to give us a special case where the relaxation time constant of these two media are equal. So we expect a charge buildup, surface charge buildup on this interface. Now we need to find that value. So let us see how to solve for it. So this is the interface. This is dielectric 1, this is dielectric 2. It is epsilon 1, sigma 1. It is epsilon 2, sigma 2. And the direction was E1, D1 were in this direction, E2, D2 were in this direction. So the normal will be like this, this will be A and 2 and normal will be like this, this will be A and 1. So again using the boundary condition A and 2 dot D1 minus A and 2 dot D2 is equal to the surface charge density on the interface. Now, A and 2 is in this direction and D1 is in this direction. So this dot product is going to be negative. So this is minus D1N. Now, A and 2 is in this direction and D2 is in this direction. So again, this dot product is going to be negative. So this minus minus sign will get cancelled out and give us plus. 
So this will be D1 is equal to rho S i. Now it implies minus epsilon 1 E1 n plus epsilon 2 E2 n is equal to rho S i. Now I can put the values of both these two E1 n and, and E2 n. I will have minus epsilon 1 and E1 n was simply sigma 2 V sigma 2 D1 plus sigma 1 D2 plus epsilon 2 and what was E2? It was sigma 1 V sigma 2 D1 plus sigma 1 D2 and this will give me the rho SI. So I can take V sigma 2 D1 plus sigma 1 D2 common. So and I will have minus epsilon 1 sigma 2 plus epsilon 2 sigma 1 is equal to rho S i. So you will find that if I sum rho S i plus rho top interface and the rho bottom plate interface that this will add to zero. Although rho top was not equal and opposite of rho bottom. So the difference between these two have come out on this interface this interface is going to have a surface charge density and that surface charge density is going to be given by this value. So this interface if, uh, can be represented by an equivalent surface charge density of this value. So in this way we have sold a numerical example which is consisting of lossy dielectrics and we have seen that uh, whenever there are two dielectrics whose relaxation and time constants are not matching then uh, there is a buildup of charge surface charge density on the interface so if you find that this lecture is helpful to you then please share and subscribe our youtube channel and also join our telegram group whose link is given in the description of this video